The, uh, this week's sponsors are David Jure in honor of Rafua Shalema for Rabbi Hyatt and in honor of Rabbi Grauman and the attendees of the Shur, Shir, and Ann and Scott Schlesinger in memory of Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs, Rabbi oh, David no. Feinstein, and uh, Rabbi William Millen. Oh, no. I have no idea. Yeah, three, three, uh, Gedolim and Torah, and, and just. Pillars in three different communities, too. Three different communities, and they, they, all, they all represented decades and decades of leadership and Torah. <clears throat> the loss, it's a big loss. Okay, Jay. Okay, good morning, everybody. Before we get to condolences, uh, we have some wonderful mazel tovs to announce. Jennifer and Yitzhak Kohn on the engagement of their son, Max. Mazel, mazel tov. tov. He's in Israel, of course. He's one of the lone soldiers that went to Israel. Uh, Nancy Karkowski and the family on the marriage of her son, Rafi. Mazel Tov. Uh, mazel tov. Her, mazel tov. Her lock, uh, of Philadelphia. And Dina and Avi Kotek on the birth of a boy. Mazel, mazel Tov. tov. Now Sarah and David Maslow have two announcements. One is a bar mitzvah, their grandson, who lives in Ramat Bay Shemesh, and a, mazel, and a bat mitzvah of their granddaughter, who lives in Riverdale. Mazel tov. Mazel tov. Jeff and Debbie Weinstein on the Benos mitzvah of their daughters, I guess they're twins, Lily and Hannah, on the bat, bat mitzvah. Other mazel tovs to announce? I guess the guy by the name Biden and Harris. Is that <laughs> I didn't want to politicize or anything. Uh, but, uh, I've seen Netanyahu and the rest of the government sent their well wishes. Netanyahu also sent a separate, separate Twitter message to uh, Donald Trump, thanking him for everything that that uh, they did for Eretz which is not a small matter, as we all know. Yeah. Okay, category two is Rafur Shlema. Please raise your hands, and Rabbi Grauman will repeat. Rabbi da David Meir ben Chaya Sippa. Rabbi Meir ben Chaya Sippa. Natanay Lelon ben Shena Sipora. Natanay Lelon ben Shena Sipora. Aiden Shalom ben uh, Alta Breina. Aiden Shalom ben Alta Breina. Udalbat Rachel. Udalbat Rachel. I am. You had your hand up. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you. Zev ben Zev ben Leia. Zev ben Leia. Chaya Riva bas Yehudis Devora. Chaya Riva bas Yehudis Devora. Thank you. Rav Rafal Yisrael Yaakov ben Bela. Chana bas Leia. Also, uh, this, where is he? Uh, the, also, it's. Uh, Rave Benjamin Rafael Ben Reut. Rave Rafael Benjamin Ben Reut. That's the uh, eight year old boy who's here in the States trying yeah. to yeah. overcome the cancer. Okay, uh, for the condolences, uh, Saul and Marcel Shalom and the passing of their nephew. And Robert Zach on the passing of his mother. And Rabbi Grauman, if you would uh, mention the three. Yeah, we, uh, as, as Scott dedicated, we um, the, over this weekend, I think uh, maybe it was Friday, that Rabbi, Rabbi, Millian, Rabbi Millen was nifter. Rabbi Millen was, of course, known to all of us, um, uh, both in, in the shul and, and for those of us who remember, he was the headmaster of the principal of the Hebrew Academy. Uh, many years ago, and um, so my children started at the academy, and a uh, very, very devoted figure. He was a, a Talmud of, um, of Soloveitchik, one of the early Talmud of Soloveitchik. Uh, he was a Talmud talk, I mean, he was a beautiful um, Balkore and, and uh, Baltfila. Um, it's, it's a loss to our community. Also, I just heard after Shabbos, and maybe this happened on Shabbos, um, uh, Rabbi Lord uh, Jonathan Sachs, who um, was a leader of values for our really as the chief rabbi of Great Britain, the UK, uh, was Nifter. 
uh, as was um, uh, of David Feinstein, the, the older son of, of Moshe, who was the, uh, the Rosh Hashiva of the Yeshiva on the east side, where Moshe founded it. His brother, the Bada Lachaim Rabbi Reuven Feinstein, is, is, the, uh, is the Rosh Yeshiva of the Teferis Yishalayim Yeshiva in uh, Staten Island, which is the same Yeshiva but a different branch. And Rabbi David was acknowledged as one of the real Gedoli Hador. For those of you who attended the uh, Siyah Mashas, you may remember Rabbi David was the one who was honored. He, he was honored with doing the Siyam, he conveyed that honor to Rabbi Kamenevsky, um, the son of his father's close associate and um, Gadol of Yaakov Kamenevsky. He was a real, he was a very humble man, the big Kamat Chacham, and he was a tremendous posek. Uh, and continued in his father's steps, uh, but with great humility, and he led the yeshiva. I think Rabbi Moshe was nifted in the 80s, mid-80s, so he, he led the yeshiva for the last 35 years. So we lost three Torah giants, three very, one local, of course, and the others more national, international. So their memory should be a, a, a bracha, and we should have to learn in their memory and uh, have great schusim. They should be a great melitz yosha for all of us. I uh, just want to add one thing, because Rav Moshe passed away right before Purim. And he was supposed to, the, the, the nifter was being taken to Eretz Yisrael, and it would have, they would have landed on Purim to have a Leviah. Something happened to the plane, and the plane didn't take off from New York, and they had to wait another whole day before they could then travel to, to Eretz Yisrael, and so the Leviah would not be on Purim to, After Purim. to uh, upset the whole nation and... and uh, have such a negative effect on Purim. So these kinds of things happen. Uh, God's still running the world. I keep joking around that. I check every once in a while. I call 1-800-G-O-D and the line's always busy. So I, uh, I assume it's still running the world the way we understand. Can I interrupt for a second as well? I got a note from Jay Marcus, who's not going to be with us on the shear today, and he would like to uh, mention learning in memory of his grandmother, Chaya Freda Bas Yaakov, whose yard site is Wednesday night. Freda Bas Yaakov, right? We should learn for, for yeah. her and for... Uh, I also wanted, forgot to mention, the yard site of my father comes up this Friday, uh, Mordechai Ben Yitzchak. Mordechai ben Yitzvah, Shabbat Shalom Haven Aliyah. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we we left off on Yud Beis on the Beis, uh, right by the Mishnah. We're going to start a new Mishnah. And um, this Mishnah is a departure from much of the approach that we've had in, in our discussion of Baba Metziah since the beginning. Uh, where the discussion focused on the finding of a metziah between two individuals and how they divided, and et cetera. That was really the focus from the beginning, Shnaim of the palace. Here, the Mishnah takes a detour and goes in a different direction. Here, the, we're going to be talking about finding a metziah that you have no vested interest in, but others have a vested interest in, and how we deal with it. We're going to find very interesting the stuff of what the halakas are upon you, the finder of a metziah, in relation to those who have the vested interest. And as we start learning this, you'll remember that in an earlier Gemara, we referenced this Mishnah, we talked about it, and you'll see how it comes up, because we actually had some um, discussion about some of the upshot of this particular uh, Mishnah and the Sudya. All right, so let's start. Yudbeis and Bez. What's a Shtar Echov? If he finds a Shtar Chov, a Shtar Chov is a, basically a loan document. Now, if you remember, what we, the discussion was that in, in, in the days of the Gemara, a loan document was prepared by the Lovet. The, the lova, the debtor, would prepare the document. He would put in all of the salient facts, have it signed, and present it to the creditor. 
the creditor, the malware, would hold on to the document until the loan was paid off, after which he would return it to the lover. And if you remember, there was some discussion about, in relation to a, a different Indian, what happens with this document in terms of the substance of what was written in it. And um, someone asked, why the issue comes up about the document, because if the document's paid off, it should be destroyed. But apparently, that was only one man to Amr who said that was the practice. And we'll see, what the Gemara will discuss that. Others say, no, they didn't destroy the document. So the document basically was could be floating around after the transaction, but there would be no cancellation. Today, we take a, a, a loan document, you have a, a loan from the bank, right? You pay off the loan, it's a big simcha, you make a party, and then you get a cancellation on the document. The loan has been paid off. So there is no suffix to anybody that there's no longer a loan. That wasn't the case in the time of the Gemara. These loan documents, if they weren't destroyed, and most of them weren't, they would be basically lying around. And that gives, gives rise to this issue. He finds a loan document. If there is a security interest in land, in other words, I loan you $1,000, and in order to make sure I get repaid, I take a corresponding value in property that you own. So you, in other words, you'll pay me, but if you don't pay me, then I have a secured interest in your real estate or in something that you own that I can actually hold on to. That's called, that's called a chayis nechosim or nechosim shiyesh In other words, these are, it, it's, it's property for which there is a responsibility to the note. So if that's the case, says the Mishnah, lo yachzoi. He does not return it to the creditor. Shebezdin nifraimehen, because bezdin will actually apply payment. So it's kind of it's an odd way of putting it. But because bezdin will enforce the note, you can't return the note to the creditor. That's that's the that's the Mishnah thing. All right, it's it's difficult to understand. We're gonna we have to wait. Aim behem achrayis, nechasim. If there is no security interest in land, I lend you $1,000 and the only security you have is my signature, right? The signature is all that I have from you. I have no underlying security interest, says the Mishnah, Yachzor. Then you do return it to the creditor, because Bezdin will not apply payment from the Nechassim. So it seems like the, the from from Divi Rav Meir, the Tanakhama Rav Meir, it seems from Rav Meir, what's the what's the underlying issue? The underlying issue is if you have property that can be applied as a security interest to the loan, Bezdin will not allow you to return it to the creditor, lest he apply that property. Now it has to be erroneously applied. Well, so we, we, we don't know that. We don't know that when you say erroneously. If there is a loan and there is an underlying security interest to that loan, why is it erroneous? You should be able to collect. If the, if the, if the, if the loaner says, I'm sorry, I, I, I lost my job in COVID. I, I can't pay you. Yeah, but wait a minute. You, have, you, you pledged your, uh, your, uh, your, uh, your skis. Your, so this your, is your, some, a finder. Um, this has nothing to do with him per se. The person who found this, Matzah Shtar he just picks it up on the street? He picks up, oh. on the, he picks up a loan document on the street, and he sees that... Okay, so, so in the, other words, it may or may not be erroneously applied, but correct. we don't want to take the chance of him going to court and causing an innocent person to incur a debt. Correct. Court. Okay. Exactly right. So, so therefore, if the Chosom Yesh Bem is, you can't return it, and if the Eimer Machrais, you can return it. The Chachamim Omrim, but the the Chachamim they uh, argue, Ben Kach or Ben Kach. In either event, Lo Yachzir, you cannot return it to the creditor. They should Bezdin inform him because Bezdin 
will apply payment from it. Okay, so it's this is somewhat cryptic. This whole discussion, what's really going on? Says Rashi, Akrai is the person. Shibut karka shibut mehen. Specifically, shibut karka. He's not talking about shibut metaltalin, where where you pledged your, um, you know, your your suit or your or your or your bicycle or your car. Even he's talking about shibut karka, actual land. Yaksev lo yaksev. Tamen lefarish for Gemara. The Gemara lefarish. The Gemara will explain everything. But so so basically, the principle is that if if Ruben is walking along and he finds a loan document. And he sees that that um, uh, there's no cancellation on the document. It looks like a live loan. He may not return it, according to a mayor. He may not return it to the creditor if there's a pledge of property. If there's no pledge of property, he can return it. And the Chacham say, in any event, you cannot. All right. So we really have to get into the Gemara to understand this because superficially, we're not quite clear what's going on. <clears throat> and of course, the Gemara starts out with the first question. Maya Stephen, what are we talking about? What's going on here? Okay. If you're going to say that the love, the borrower, admits, I owe this money. This is a live document, but I owe it. So the Gemara asks, Why can you not? return it if there is a pledge of real property. You just heard the Lova admitted to the loan. It's pretty straightforward. Lova admits to the loan. He admits that this is a valid document. Document I wrote that the document was written by me and I gave it to the creditor. Amai lo yaxer. On the other hand, says the Gemara, ve'i kishe'en chayiv mode. If the Lova is not mode and saying, no, I don't know it, if there's no pledge of security, why do you return it over his objections? This should be a, this can't be an open and shut case. He says, I, I don't own it. I, I don't owe it. Now, he could not owe it for a variety of reasons. It doesn't have to be one reason. Actually, the, the Mishnah um, uh, uh, enunciates a number of potential reasons why he doesn't owe it. One reason is because uh, I, I, I borrowed and I repaid and I got the, I got the note back and I was careless and I lost it. That's a valid reason. Another reason that is collateral. Uh, that's collateral, right. In other words, uh, I gave you the collateral. Everything's hundred percent correct. You gave it back to me and I erroneously lost the document, but I paid it. So you can't just say because because you found it, you should give it to the creditor just because it has no achrayis nechosim, it has no pledge of real property. Why is that significant? Another reason might be that it's a false document. It's not even a correct document. It was forged. In other words, and the Mishnah gives other reasons too. So in other words, there's valid reason to assume that this document isn't what it says it is. So that's the Kasha of the Gemara. What are we talking about? Does he admit? If he admits even with Achrayis Nechosim, you should return it. And if he doesn't admit, no. Says Rashi, Kishachai of Modeh, Shahalove, Modeh, Shashtar, in a Perea, a Milo Yakzer, Im Litov, Lekuchos, Ba Badin, Hu Tarfin. It's a proper collection of the property. Why, why, why don't you return it to him, to the creditor? Um, so that, that, this is the question of the Gemara. The Gemara is just not clear how to interpret this Mishnah. All right, so let's go back. Uh, okay, so it's Amalo ki Achrayis Nechosu Mayachsa. Nihidalo Gavim Mishabadim Bene Chori, Mishabadim Bene Chori, Migabe so in other words, the Gemara is asking as follows. It, it, it's, it's explaining further. If he doesn't admit, um, if he doesn't admit that um, at all, then why is it good enough that he you can collect, you can't collect from, from Shabbatim? Why should you collect from anything? He is objecting to the, uh, to the, to the notes. 
So this is the Kasha. Emphrit the Gemara Zayf. So the Gemara gives the following explanation. No, Olam Kishachayev Mode. Really, he, he does admit. He does say, I admit to the law. Vahacha, Hanatama, our reason why we don't allow it. Hashinan. So listen, listen to this potential pattern of facts. The Hashinan, Shemakosef, Lelovez Benison, Velolova Atishre. The first month of the Jewish year is the month of Nisan. Year starts from Nisan. So, and what did I say in the beginning? That the pattern here is that the Lovet writes the, the, the loan document and he creates it. It's signed by all the parties and then given from the Lovet to the Malve. The Lovet writes it out in Nisan and he writes out the date. Today is Rosh Chodesh Nisan and I'm writing out a document that I, Reuven, uh, am borrowing a thousand dollars from Shimon. But Vololove at Tishrei, the actual event, the actual loan, didn't happen until six months later. In other words, he prepared the document. They were negotiating. They didn't agree to all the terms. He put the note aside. And then comes Tishrei, six months later, they agree on the loan. And as Rashi will explain, or, or here or later on, the, the, the Rashi explains that they didn't want to go through writing another star. So they took the star from Nisan and they executed it in Tishrei. Now, so the cost of the Lova is Benisan, the Lova at Tishrei, the Osa Le Mitra Plakucha Shalokadin. Now, what happened? In this document, he wrote that I'm pledging my property uh, in Silver Spring, Maryland. Well, it's a nice property. It's certainly worth the value of the note. No problem. The only problem is that between Nissan and Tishrei, he sold the property. He sold it to Levy. Levy bought the property. The property was not encumbered. There was no loan on the property when he sold it to him in Tammuz. Comes Tishrei. He signs the note. Now, what can happen here? Since he pledged this property, if this note is allowed to go forward and it's lost and, and, and you find it and give it to the creditor, he can go ahead and collect from properties that were sold before the note was ex before the loan was exercised that pledge of property is improper the pledge of property was proper in nissan when he wrote it had it consummated in nissan it would have given him a loan with a pledge in property but the property went ahead and he may have forgotten about it let's say it was innocent he forgot about it he sold it to levy in tamuz comes Tishrei, and he says you know what um, Shimon, um, Shimon says to Ruven, I'm going to borrow that thousand dollars now and here's the note. Wonderful. The note is great and it has a pleasure property, but that property no longer belongs to him. It was sold in Tammuz. So what's going to happen is that it will improperly be taken because what will Besden say? Besden will enforce the note. And the note says that there's a pledge of this property in Silver Spring which in fact can't be pledged because it was sold prior to the note. All That's right. what the Mishnah means when it says loan, that if there's a pledge of property, you can't give it back to the creditor because the Besden will apply the, 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 the principle of the note, meaning the pledge of property, and that will be incorrect. Excuse me, Rabbi. Yeah. So, you know, with all this, the smart Chachamim dealing with this, had they had a second signature when actually things happened, you'd be finished. These vulnerabilities could never happen. If, they, if you were required to have both a, uh, in the date that the document is prepared or at least the date that the actual transfer occurred. We have closing when it comes to houses today. That's, so why didn't they think of adding another signature? And another you, you, so, okay, so, so again, you're talking in a time when there is no central filing system, there is no, there is no Seder to, 
to how things are done. <clears throat> the the lover is responsible to write a star. He prepares the shadar. He does all the work. Who is to think that if he's preparing the star and meeting to make the loan that he's going to put it aside for six months? It it just didn't. You're right. It just didn't enter into their thinking that this has to be done in a more organized fashion. And unfortunately, you know, we say that Rashi wrote on contracing. He wrote on scraps of paper. You know, the back of an envelope. It's 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 the way that we think that our forefathers transacted big business on the back of an envelope. There was no system. Today we have systems, we have organizations, we have computers that keep track and keep records. Once upon a time, there was no central authority and things were done very much between people and on a local level without, uh, without proper oversight is the, is the answer. But the lover, in order to have a document and know some halakas of how to write it, the dates and other kinds of things and who the item have to be, they could have certainly added in you know, you're absolutely correct. They, they, must they, have could have it. they could have very much corrected it, uh, except that it was it was permissible, it was legal to do this to create a star, and and they, they weren't necessarily mockbit. Yeah, I mean, you should have put the date of the event, but you're going to see from the Gemara that there are different levels of what one can do, and it's either proper or improper. But you're right. I mean, if it, 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 there's a simple answer to it, except that that's not the way they conducted business. So by conducting business this way, and, and again, we're going to see that the most simple of answers is you cancel a note when it's paid. That wasn't the practice. There was only one man to Omar who said, no, you have to do it. That's the only way. Again, he was, he was ahead of his time. Shmuel, he was the one who said, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. When, when, you, when you transact and a loan is paid, you take the paper and you rip it up. That's what you do. I'm just okay, having, I'm I'm just having yeah. difficulty understanding that they didn't analyze the vulnerabilities of these right. things and fix it early on. Right, right, exactly, exactly. It's amazing, but, yeah. Yeah, but all this evolved for thousands of years and this is this minimal type of star requirement was itself a huge step up over uh just doing things verbally in a handshake verbally. and so on so right. we have to look at it in, in context that this is a gradual process it to get an to where we are today evolutionary process correct correct but but you, but you're right that there are simple things that you fix and say you can't do this or you can do that and again the gemara warns us and we'll see as we learn through the gemara we'll understand that there were concerns about some of this and therefore there were some safeguards put in but obviously um, uh, not sufficient so here the gemara is telling us that that the that 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 the the, the, the chachamim were concerned for this type of event because it was normal to do this write it here, exercise it there. And because of that, the, so therefore you have the potential for fraud. Therefore, they didn't allow it. So now, th so that's the answer, right? <clears throat> Frank the Gemara, if you're concerned for that, if you're concerned for that, why are you not concerned for that across the board in any star that comes before the Besden? Anytime something comes before the Besden, why, why are you afraid? You're saying you're afraid here in this particular instance. Any star, any star can have that potential of not being properly uh, uh, done in the proper order and can raise that concern. So that the Gemara is now asking, basically, you've raised a good point. Why is this not always a prime problem? Why is it only a problem if the star is lost and found by somebody and, and now he doesn't know what to do? Any star that comes before us, we have to, why don't we uh, examine and ask and do all kinds of things? When was it written? I mean, that's not the way it was done. And but, again, what is the concern here that the star lists um, an obligation and Besden will look at it and it's possible that they will see it in the star and they'll enforce it when perhaps it wasn't to be enforced, right? Correct. But then the guy who's suddenly getting a knock on his door or getting a registered letter, he'll just contest it. So, and, and you know, I mean, I mean, he'll say, I, I, I legitimately sold this afterwards or whatever the case may be, right? Right, except that 
the, the, the third person who now has the property who's being really harmed here because he's the one whose property. Right, and what, when he bought it, it wasn't encumbered, and now it's suddenly encumbered in some way. Right. So, so, so today we have what's called lien searches. Right. In other words, we know that you can go through the records and you can find, oh, wait a minute, this property was sold in such and such a day. Again, no such thing existed. When, when Levy bought the property from Shimon, he didn't necessarily ask, did you, Shimon, did you pledge this property to anybody? Oh, okay. He never right. asked him. He right. just went ahead and bought a beautiful piece of property, and Shimon didn't tell him, either because he forgot or because he intentionally didn't tell him. And we're going to create a chaotic sequence of events where people are not going to trust each other because basically it's totally hefker. It's totally without any kind of, 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 of system how it was done. And that's what, so the Gemara says, we're going to prevent that from happening by, by, by not allowing you to collect from a note that you found that has the chosen mishubadim that has pledged property. Well, once again, you found the note. Yeah. And you're just a stranger. Right. So what is and, it? And you want to return it to, to the right person. So, but that is so strange. Then what do you do with it? Oh, oh, so th let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay. Right. So we're thinking that he wants to return it to the to the creditor. Gemara, so says the Gemara, not so okay. fast. You can't return it to the creditor because he may come to collect. We'll see a little bit later what we do with it. Okay. At first instance, the first thing is let's return it to the creditor. And, and so the Gemara good. says that, so, so in other words, First, they ask if he admits or if he doesn't admit. The Gemara says, no, we're talking about a case where the Lova admits. I borrowed and I owe the money, but we can't return it to the creditor because of this problem of Nechos and Mishubadim, that if it was pledged, it was pledged. So now the Gemara asks Akasha, um, and for the Gemara, Kol Shtara Lorea Hanarea. Now we come to the to the to the source of the issue. In other words, in the normal course of events, we don't go underneath and question an underlying uh, uh, event between two parties. When do we question? Hanarea says Rashi. Hol v'nafal Isra diyesh lome im hoyer kasha hoyer So th this. It's a little bit of a, of, a, of a stretch from our thinking, not Megamora's thinking. If, in fact, it was a valid document, he would have been more careful to guard it because he was slipshod. Because he was slipshod, there is what's called a rea, a reyasa, meaning a, a blemish. That blemish is what, is what the Bezdin says, we're going to seize on that blemish and we're going to not allow things to happen. But in the normal course of commerce, we're not going to question every star. We're going to say, how can you collect from a star that has a pledge? Because there's nothing wrong with it. That's the way of the world. So this gives us a little bit of insight into how they were thinking that as long as everything is normal, now, it doesn't mean there isn't a problem later, but, okay? But we're not going to address that. If it's a normal transaction with a pledge of property and everything good, fine, we're going to let it go. Where there is a problem already because the star was lost. And Rashi says, if it was absolutely kosher, he would have been more careful with it. So because he wasn't careful with it, it gives rise to the question, is it really still owed or was it already paid? And therefore, this question comes into being. Now, you can ask all kinds of questions. I mean, and, and you're building on something that is somewhat tenuous, but it gives us an insight into our chazal, how, how the, the rabbis were thinking, is that, is that when uh, the, the famous Gemara it, 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 the, that quotes this particular passage and says, this has to do with other things as well, gitin uh, and other things, is that, as long as there's no question, then Lomach Sakinen, then and as we don't insert ourselves into an event and question it. When something comes up that questions it, then we start inserting ourselves and start searching out what was there a problem here. And and I mean we see this in the real world, right? I mean thousands, if not tens of thousands of transactions that go on, everything is fine and good. 
And it's only that, that small fraction of events that give rise to concern, and those are investigated. Unfortunately, many of these proper transactions later on turn out to be fraudulent because, you know, whether it's a, a scheme or some kind of, um, you know, a deleterious event. But, but we nevertheless, we don't question it, Pashas Meisel. Go ahead. Okay, but, but this is the IRS. Once they, once they audit you, you're going to yeah. be audited. And you, you're right, right. Once they find a little something and yeah. they question it, you're right. Then they'll start questioning. And maybe if you give a good answer, it's okay. But maybe they'll say, okay, you gave a good answer. But the next time they'll ask you again. Exactly. So yeah. actually, I, I thought of, a, I was thinking something else. I thought of a real world example now with remote deposit. You, you get a check and then you take and you scan it with your phone, your computer, whatever, and it goes into the bank system. Right. And so before you deposit, this $100 check is worth $100. It's like having $100 of cash lying around and you treat it very carefully. And afterwards, it's just a piece of paper and you just, and it just floats around. Now, sometimes that leads to a mistake. Uh, my brother had one where uh, we ended up depositing a second time because didn't realize, uh, oh, this is already deposited. So it's just like the star. How do you know it's collected? If you're careless with it, then it probably means you already collected and it's done. And if you're not yeah. careless with you're keeping it safe, then you're keeping it safe until you can right. cash right. So, so, so look, I, I have a habit and maybe others do the same thing. The minute if we do that kind of deposit, I take a pen and I, and I, I strike it or I write paid on it. Again. Kind of like marking a spoiled ballot. But, right, <laughs> right. But, but, but again, this is, this, this is a testament to our own frailty and our own inability necessarily to keep it in such a way, or we should rip it up or do something with it, right? I mean, uh, uh, once upon a time, uh, uh, years ago, I remember um, I, I, got, uh, I got a check and um, I wanted to make a copy of it. So we made a copy of it on a color printer, which was the same color as the check. You know, it wasn't black and white, it was the color of the check. I did the deposit, I forgot about it. Years later, I'm looking at it, my wife says to me, did you really forget to make this deposit? It was a fairly sizable sum. I said, I couldn't have forgotten. I know I must have made this deposit, but here was the check in perfect form, in color, everything else. And it turned out I had deposited it, but I said, wait a minute, I'm not doing this again because Again, you want to recreate something, but you're just creating a problem for yourself. So you're right. In all these instances, um, you have to have a system. You have to understand what it is that you're doing, and then you should immediately destroy the check or do something with it. Otherwise, it will create issues. So here's a perfect case where the Gemara is giving us an example, is that as long as everything goes along smoothly, we're fine. But once there's a raya, once there is a concern, then we're ready. The door opens up, and we have a problem. Okay. So again, the Gemara has given us a good answer and has said that we're talking about a case where he does admit. And the reason why we have a problem with the Chosim, Sheesh Lamachayis, is because of this situation of where you'll, you'll write the Shtar in Nisan and you won't actually transact for Tishrei, and then they're going to collect from property that has no business being collected. Very good. Frank the Gemara, Kashi, bottom of Yud Beis Omid Beis. Elahod Bethanan, we have a Mishnah. The Mishnah says as follows. Kostin shtar lelove, afal pisha ein malve imo. The Gemara brings down that, uh, I think it's in Baruch Basra, but you, you, can, you, can, um, you can write a shtar, lelove can write a shtar and prepare it, even if the malve is not present, the lender is not present at the time he does it. Mechat in other words, you're allowed to do it. Break the Gemara. Hey, how can you do such a thing? Exactly our kasha here. If you're going to do a shtar, the lobe is going to do a shtar. Remember, the lobe is the one who initiates the paperwork. He's the, uh, it costs money, whatever, you have to get a scribe. So it's all on the lobe. So the lobe does all the preparation. The malve is not there. So again, today is, let's call it, um, uh, today is Rosh Chodesh Nisan. I write a document and uh, I prepare it. I have my witnesses, but the malve is not there, meaning the transaction can't be consummated today because the malve is not here. And the Mishnah says there, you're allowed to do it. Why are you allowed to do it? This is the classic case 
where he's going to write it. For whatever reason, the transaction won't happen. Maybe it won't happen in Tishrei. It'll happen Erev Pesach, 14 days later. Even so, 14 days to go by, that's a world of time. Anything can happen to that property. Why do we allow it? It opens up the door to a potential fraud. That's the Gemara's cashier. And it's a Mishnah that says you're allowed to do it. If you're afraid of, of writing it in one date and transacting another date, why you allow it? So Omar Ravasi comes Ravasi, top of uh, Yud Gimel Omar Aleph. Ravasi says, Bishtore Hakno, that we're dealing Bishtore Hakno. What is the Bishtore Hakno? Says Rashi, Shemakbalo Nechosov Nehayom. He pledges his property from today, meaning the day he writes it, Ben Yilve, Ben Lo Yilve, whether he transacts the, the, the loan or not. Yigba Mehem Laosis Man Mehayom. So this is a whole different category. Today is Rosh Chodesh Nisan. We write a star for Rosh Chodesh Nisan. The, lo- the mouth is not here. He didn't, he got delayed. He didn't show up. I, we're going to have a problem. No, we're not going to have a problem because this is called Shtar Hakno, where I, the Love, pledge payment of this note regardless of whether the loan goes through. Ben Yilve, Ben Lo Yilve, Yigba Mehen, the Malve may collect, La Osa's Man Mehayom. So if it's a, if it's a thousand dollar loan and the Malve doesn't show up, so the Lova is writing it, and he's writing it with the condition that I now pledge that thousand dollars to the Malva, regardless of what happens from here on out. Effective yeah. on, on the first of the month. So uh, that effective, effective, of, of, exactly, effective on the slow That's part before. of the essence of the contract. So no matter how long this process takes, because one party wasn't there, exactly. it's part of the essence. Exactly right. So in other words, that's his condition. Now think about it this way. Let's think about it this way. In those days, there was no car, there was no train, there was no plane. So, and you have a, a rich man living in, and let's call him in Warsaw uh, or in Babylon, wherever, and, and a borrower lives a thousand miles away, and he hears about this rich man who would make him a loan, and he says to him, Yanko, uh, uh, you'll make me a loan? He says, absolutely. What, wonderful. I'm going to write the star. I'm going to do everything and prepare. In the meantime, I'll get it all ready. But of course, a thousand miles away takes quite some time. But Yankel, not, but he, but he, but the, 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 the lover knows that, that Rabbi Yankel is going to lend him the money. So he says, I'm writing the star and I'm going to pledge to return it. Don't worry. I'm pledging it from today. It's yours. And I'm putting down this beautiful property I have in, in, in Silver Spring. And this is going to be the the um, the, the shibun. This is going to be the collateral. Everything is fine and good. Now, a, a thousand miles can take weeks, months, who knows how long. But finally, he gets the 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 halva. And at that time, that document has already been written. The ink has been dried, and everything is good. So the Gemara says, tells us, Ravasi says that kind of star is an absolute ironclad pledge of payment. Therefore, there is no problem. So if this Lobe in our situation admits to the loan, he admits to the loan, he said, I definitely loaned it. The document gets lost, right? Levy comes along and finds the document. No problem. You can return it to the creditor because it's a star hakno. And it says on the star that, that Lobe pledges to make this payment to the Malve regardless. In other words, whatever the appropriate language to induce him to make that loan is on there. So now Rav Asi has sort of vitiated the problem. He's wiped it off. And he's saying, you know what? We're dealing with a shtar no, no problem. Okay, good answer. The So now we've answered that question. Wait a minute. Correct the Gemara. If If you're telling me that we're dealing with a shtar hakna, then masnis and diktoni, then our Mishnah, meaning our very Mishnah here, that learns, in yesh be machrayis nechosim, lo yachzor. What does the Mishnah say? Rav Meir says that if there is a pledge of property, the finder cannot return it to the creditor. Vu'ukmina kishachayev mode. 
And we and we our Gemara says no. We're talking about a case where the Lova actually admitted it. And why can't you return it? And that's the reason. Our Gemara gives the reason because of this this this, this Nisan Tishrei problem. Right? The Gemara Milo What's the problem? Let's take a look if it's a star no. In other words, the Gemara asks the following kasha. Okay, you've now established that Rav Asi says it's a shtar hakno. Hashtar hakno has a different category. So why does our Gemara, in other words, our, our Mishnah doesn't come out either way. Here's what he's going to say. If it's a shtar hakno, then clearly, since the Lova admitted that he borrowed the money, there's no question that he pledged it. I'm not worried about a Nisan Tishrei situation because it doesn't matter if it's six months later, he pledged in the document, I'm going to repay you no matter what. So we're not worried about a sale of the Nechosim in the interim between Nisan and Tishrei because even if he sold it, the borrower already pledged, I will repay you, has nothing to do with the fact that the, the property was, was, was pledged at this particular date. I owe the money, right? That's one circumstance. And if it's not a star Hakna, and it's a regular star, and he wouldn't write a regular star, Rav Asi says the only star that, that a person would write and pledge is a star Hakna. In other words, to do this whole thing can only be with a star Hakna. Otherwise, it's not written unless it's all immediately done. There's no interregnum. There's no hefsik. So if there's no hefsik, then you know that the Nisan Tishrei situation can't exist because he would never have written such a star that is Nisan and Tishrei. The only time you write such a star is with the star Hakna, according to Rav Asi. So according to Rav Asi, how do you explain our Mishnah? Our Mishnah says, according to Rav Meir, that you return it, you don't return it if it's pledged, but you return it if it's not pledged, Mamonovshach. If it's a star hakno, then it makes no difference. And if it's not a star hakno, then then um, then uh, there's no there's never a problem of, of Tishrei and Nissan. You you want to say Tishrei and Nissan obviates the whole star. Why does it obviate the star if it's if the Nissan Tishrei problem is because there would be no way that he would have done it and then pledged it because of the because of the the six month difference so the kasha is how does the circumstance of our mishnah ever come up according to ravasi okay we understand that in other words either it was a star or it wasn't if it's a star it's no problem if it wasn't a star it's also no problem because it never would have come up why are you telling me that we can't do such a thing because of the nisan and tishra problem Without a star akna, there is no Nisan and Tishrei problem. According to Rav Asi, he never would have done it. So let's take a look at Rashi. Rashi will explain. Um, okay, so Ihachi the Bishtari the Lavakna lo Avidi, the Ksivi. He would never have written it. Ela Mk Ro Halova Hamos, right? In other words, he's saying exactly what we just said that if it's a star akna. Then, then there's no problem. The Bishtar de lo hakno lo avidi diksivi. He never would have written it. Ela imke ro halo halo halovis hamos. Unless the money was in front of him, he never would have done it. So, in other words, there is no. It's not a mitzias. So, how can our Mishnah say this is the mitzias when, according to Rav Asi, it can't happen? That's the kasha of the Gemara. Okay. Um, Okay, so, so in other words, that's the kasha on Rav Asi. How do we understand our Gemara? Amalei Rav Asi. So Rav Asi himself comes to explain the, the Gemara, and he says, you know, you're really right. What I just said is 100% correct. 
But Afa got the shor the loak no ki leka malva vahade locus vinan. Even though I say with 100% certainty that in the case where there's no malve, right, that they would not write the star if it's not a star akno, because people know not to do it. Masnissen, given the nofel, asrole vachashinan filma akre vachasif. I nevertheless have to admit to you that in our Mishnah, once again, since the, the, uh, since the document fell, in other words, it, 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 uh, it was missing, it, it fell, so that already creates a, a, a suffix on the accuracy of the document. Now I'm afraid that, um, uh, that, the, that the document was improperly created, meaning it was created one date and the loan happened on another date. And therefore, the mission is correct. So what Rav Asi is telling us is that in principle, only a shtar hakno can have a, uh, it would be allowed to have one date of, of, the, of the note and another date for the actual loan. Because in a shtar hakno, you're pledging not, you're pledging underneath the loan. You're pledging besides the loan, I'm going to repay this no matter what. But... That's in the case of a normal transaction where there is a missing document, where there's a document that gets lost. Rav Asi will admit, now I'm worried that because the document is lost, maybe it wasn't done 100% correct. So in other words, this, this, this whole underlying question of the authenticity of the document comes into question once it isn't done kiseder, meaning uh, the, the, the document is, is transacted, the parties have it, and they properly make the payments when that money, that, uh, and, and return the document when they should, all fine and good. But once there is a chink in that line, once there is a break in the, in the, in the, in the transparency, now we have to start worrying. So Rav Asi says, I admit to you that that is a problem, therefore in our Mishnah, uh, they, they, they caution not to do it because of that, uh, of that problem. So, in other words, word to the wise, if you're going to transact the document, you're going to transact, make sure you secure your documents, make sure that there isn't any mistakes made, because once there's a mistake, that can unravel the whole, the whole thing. So, in other words, this Ruvain, who lent the money to Shimon, and now it's lost, he may be out of luck, that, that the, the, um, the halacha is you can't, you can't get back that document if there was a pledge of, of um, a property because of that break in the, in the transparency and he'll be the loser. So if, he, if really he lost it, let's say the creditor was the one who really lost it, because remember, as long as that document is in the position of the creditor, it's a, it's a valid loan. If he lost it, then basically we say, shame on you, you lost it, now you lost the, the possibility of, of, uh, of collecting from, now you can still collect the money, it's just you can't collect from the underlying secured interest, meaning the property, because of that break in action and maybe something improper happened. So, but right. the, the, the fundamental principle of Hamotzi Mechavero of Araya governs here, right? Right, exactly right. So with, with a missing star, it's, the burden is on the creditor to establish that, uh, that there was such a loan and if necessary to get the adim and, and establish all the circumstances of the, of the loan in the first place. Right, right. So, so now, so I think there's an way. intervention yeah. here by the court that in these circumstances, we're not gonna let you, let you fully recover what, uh, what you would under normal circumstances. You will, you, we're not gonna let you recover the star, your raya. The raya is not gonna be permitted to come back into your hands under certain circumstances. Isn't that what they're saying? Right, but now, but, but, but now let's go a step, to, a step and two further. What's the real problem? The real problem is that there may, be an, there may be an innocent victim here. That innocent victim is the person who bought this piece of land, and he didn't think to ask, oh, did you pledge this land to anybody? There's no reason for him to ask that, remember, in those days. So he didn't ask it. He owns the land. One day there's a knock on his door, uh, we're taking your land. Why are you taking my land? Because this land was pledged in a note before you bought it. So now there's a way of remedying all this, David, because we can now start looking into the whole chain of events. When did you buy it, et cetera, et cetera. Not all is lost 
just because it happened. What the Gemara is saying is that we're not going to allow you to return it to the creditor, so to speak, without doing Drisha V'chakira all the way down the line to make sure that there isn't an innocent person being hurt. So at the end of the day, all's well that may end well. How? If this happens, so the Gemara, we don't discuss that here, but what can happen here is we're not going to allow you to return it. What we will do is let's start investigating. We're going to investigate, was this property really transacted? And if it was, and, and again, I don't know how good the land records were, but you'll go to the land, you'll find that there is someone living on the land. You're going to say, when did you sell, when did you own this land? But he's the one that's going to get hurt because if he didn't ask the questions and it was done properly, then, then the Lova defrauded him. He defrauded the, 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 the guy who bought the land by not telling him that the land was pledged to somebody else. So therefore, the Gemara says, we don't allow it. Now, again, maybe all's well that will end well if you can go through this whole process and maybe no one's going to get hurt. But someone may get hurt here. And well, there's going to be a lot of billable legal hours. That's for sure. That's so. for sure. That's for sure. But again, without having a system where you can corroborate and and, and the system that says this property was sold on such a day. You know what? Lazy's going to say, I don't remember when I bought the property. I don't know if I bought it, if I put it in Tammuz or I bought it in Av, maybe before Tisha B'Av, maybe before the three weeks, maybe after the three weeks. You know, we don't transact in the three weeks. Okay. So I bought it after the three weeks. I mean, again, you start raising all these questions and you see how complicated it becomes. All right. Is the, the Bezdin is undertaking to do the Drisha V'chakira? No, no. The no. Bezdin, no, the Bezdin is saying you can't do it. I'm only saying to you that maybe this can end well if they go down the road and do all of this other stuff. But at prime the fascia, the basis, uh, remember, this, this poor lady is coming to the Bezdin and saying, Bezdin, I found this note. Instead of a thousand, it's a hundred thousand dollars. I don't know what to do with this. A hundred thousand dollars. What am I going to do with this note? Bezdin says, you can't give it to the creditor because, okay. Then Ravasi says, wait a minute, a Shara Knoll? Of course you can give it to the creditor. It doesn't matter. There was a pledge. Ah, Shara Knoll. We see that Ravasi says there's a chink in the armor. So let's just touch on the next subject because we won't have time to develop because now comes a buyer and he wants to give a different tariff. So Ravasi said, Shara Knoll comes a buyer. Abaya Omar, no. Eid of the Chasum of That it's not a Shtar Hakna, it's the witnesses with their signature of verifying this particular loan. And this loan, because of that verification, will be inured and will be protected from any challenge. In other words, what we're basically saying to him is that. The, the um, once you sign with the witnesses, even if the transaction itself didn't happen, the witnesses signed and the witnesses' signature make it as if the transaction happened. In other words, the, Abaye is saying, this is not a Shtar no, but if you think about it, it's like a Shtar no, because the whole point of a Shtar no was that it said in prima facie language, I am borrowing this, I'm, I'm, I'm borrowing money, but I'm pledging to repay whether I borrow or I don't borrow. That's the Shtar no. Comes Abai and says, no, and we see that that has a problem. Comes Abai and Abai says, Eida Bechosm of Zachin. So let's look at Rashi. Abai Oma, Ho did non Kosm Shtar Lelova below Malve. Remember the Mishnah that said, you can, the, the Lova can do a Shtar without the Malve, and we asked, how can that be? I feel the Bishtar de Lavakno, Nami, even without a Shtar Akno, Abaya says it's okay. The Inami also the Mitraf Mahaidna, and you can collect from today. Vuhu lo lolove at Vuhu lo lolove at Tishrei, lo shalo kedin hu, the aid of Bechosm of Zochenlo Mehayom Shechosmu Zochenlo Hashibud. From the day that the witnesses signed, that's the day of the obligation. Forget about when the loan was made. The obligation commences as soon as the Adam signs. Even if he didn't actually lend the money until Tishrei, given the Omris, 
אבל חשתו דתנן כוס ומחשינן דום הכוסף ללא ולא לא ולכמה פרח אמר לו יחסה, הרי זוכר לי עדר בחוס ובשפר תורך. So Abaya, again, Abaya's principle is that the signature of the witnesses is what seals the loans, not the loan itself. So if you think about a shtar hakno, and you say the point of the shtar hakno was that there is an obligation regardless of the loan, but the term shtar hakno means something that is problematic. So forget about it. It's not a shtar hakno. It's a regular document. And, and the Malveh couldn't show up because he was in Warsaw, in Babylon, somewhere a thousand miles away. But the witnesses signed it in front of the Love, and that signature seals the deal, and now the Love is obligated. So now we're not worried anymore. It's not a question of if there's going to be a problem here. If you see such a star with the witness's signature, Abayah says, it's perfectly fine. You don't have to worry about Nisan and Tishrei anymore, because even if there was a Nisan and Tishrei, the Lova already pledged it. That's a Bayashita. We're going to have to go into that. I'm sorry? Is there any issue of interest? Is there any issue of interest? Principle? Is there any issue of interest? Or does he just have to say the principle? Because if uh, there's a difference between the uh, Something was transferred after the document was signed. He should have the interest in the document signed post. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not hearing clearly because of the break, but if the question is about interest, there, there is no interest because there's no ribis, there's no interest on this star at all. Um, in other words, uh, uh, we don't loan with interest. You can loan under circumstances with a pledge of a certain. Uh, something or other, but ribis, interest itself, is not an issue here. We're only talking about the principle. For our discussion, let's just focus on the principle. He lent him a thousand or a hundred thousand, whatever, and that hundred thousand is what has to be repaid and what is pledged. So, so according to Abaya, that's the, the overarching fa factor here is that Abaya says that the witness's signature seals the deal, and therefore, so so Abai says, Omar Abayama Aida Bakosma Zokalova Afilish story the low hakno, a star that is not hakno, Mishum the Kosha like given the omas bestor the low hakno, kilesa la malva bahade, locusvina, leka la mechash the akri vikosif. You're not afraid that he will that he will write it. Why? In other words, there will be something uh, uh, improper, because it doesn't matter what happens once the witnesses sign that document. That is a valid document. Even if he sells the property later on, we're not worried anymore that he won't repay. So th that's the principle. We have to think about it a little bit more deeply. But so Abaya creates this difference between Ishtar Akna, which is the document itself, and the um, and, and what was his kasha? Abaya, Abaya came to answer the kasha because according to Rav Asi, Rav Asi said, yes, the once a Everything, if everything is good, we have no problem. But once a star is lost, we're worried that even though he shouldn't do it, maybe he did do it, and therefore there was this problem of, of Nisan and Tishrei. So Abaya comes to answer, you know what? That's not going to be a problem, according to me, because according to me, even in a regular star, not a star hakno, in a regular star, you can make a pledge that is ironclad when? When the witness is signed. So in the case where the Malva was, didn't show up, and we were worried that the Lover would sign it, would, would make a document, and then he would do it in Nissan and would transact in, in Tishrei, says Abaya, no problem. When those witnesses sign in Nissan, it's ironclad, and we don't have to worry. So if the, if the, if the loan didn't happen till Tishrei, and let's say he sold his properties in Tammuz, no problem. You, it, it, you, that pledge is as ironclad as it gets. So that's Abaya's theory. And, and, and again, there's a lot of kashas, we'll discuss it next week. So now we see, again, you see how, how the Chazal, the, 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 you know, they were thinking in those times that they didn't have the systems and they were trying to put in place some kind of a sort of placeholder that would allow such transactions to go through. 
Uh, Jay is, uh, is started out by asking them, such great chacham, why didn't they think through this whole system that we have today? But, uh, right, I mean, that, that's, uh, that's besides the point. But nonetheless, um, it's instructive to see how they came around to uh, understanding um, Mecca Chememka, which was an important consideration. I mean, commerce was, it was a critical part of, of the trust that people had in each other. If they didn't have that trust, then everything would come to a grinding halt. All right, but so it's possible that it took place spontaneously. I mean, people made deals, uh, you know, impromptu, and it's only when there was a problem that it went to the court. So that's people correct. Would, there would be leeway in how any two humans could make deals. I mean, right. But, but remember, this was already a step in the right direction from everything being done by pair. Like, like was said before, I mean, everything was done on a handshake. Again, it was a, it was a solid handshake, and we all agreed it should be that way. But people forget. Or people don't remember, you know, I don't, I really don't remember, did I sell this property, did I not sell this property? And, and that's, by the way, the whole point of the Mishnah, is that the, the Mishnah the, the, uh, came to sort of correct the concern of Torah Shabal Peh, is, right. that, is that, you know, without documenting, we're going to lose it. We're, we're just not going to have it. And, and Baruch Hashem, we have, uh, we have developed a system through the years. Even, I'm talking about our, our Jewish system of doing things in the proper fashion. Can you imagine in, in, the compl in today's complicated world, if you didn't have the checks and the balances and, 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 the, and the, you know, the instant um, uh, notification, computer or otherwise, I mean, it would be chaotic. And, and as things get more complicated, it gets more chaotic. So there was a simpler time. It was just a question of, I'll lend you $10,000 and you give me your sheep or you give me your, your karka or you give me this and that. But nevertheless, th they are the, the, the ground, sort of the, the, the groundswell for understanding our halakhas today. And by the way, that's how halakhas are understood today. When you have poskim who, who, who make uh, uh, decisions on halakha, they go back to the Gemara. They go back to the, 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 the halacha that came from this Gemara as to how people should transact and what's proper and not proper. So think about it in that, in that fashion. Yeah, to, to paraphrase the vice president-elect, we stand on their shoulders. We stand on their shoulders, absolutely. Everything has a, 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 you know, a, a balance. And here we are. This is the fundamental. <laughs> to coin someone else, we, we're constitutionalists. We're, we go back to the actual halacha. We say, this is a halacha. How do you extrapolate from this halacha what actually we should do today without necessarily creating a new halacha? We're not going to create a new halacha. We're going to go back to see what the halacha was and how it fits into what we do today. All right, Mr. Well, I, I think, <laughs> to be fair about the background, though, that uh, Yuri Yahu, which was centuries before this, was involved in a land transaction, and the Haftarah specifies how they went to the trouble of recording it on a tablet, putting it in a clay pot, sealing the clay pot, and all that that's the documentation. This is long before this. Okay, so, 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 so David, we'll go one better. This week's Parsha, we see that when Avram Avinu wanted to buy the plot of the, of the Machpelah, he transacted with Ephron. Oh, no, we'll do it, Balpeh, I'll give it to you, Maisegeshefen. And he said, no, I want a transaction that I can rely on, that it will right. be bought and sold. Now, he did that, and Rahmanas, here we are, thousands of years later, still fighting over that piece of ground. Was it properly transacted? Uh, Robert, and, 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 and fighting over the other piece of ground in Yerushalayim that was also documented. Also, exactly right. So, so you see that notwithstanding the best intentions, right, everything was done with the best and correct intentions, here we are, thousands of years later, arguing over the piece of ground, was it properly bought and sold? Does it belong to Avram Avinu, et cetera, et cetera. So your story of Yermio is terrific, and yet we see that the, the roots are even before Yermio in, in our basic uh, Torah. Nevertheless. Nowadays, nowadays you have in Manhattan, the diamond industry, a handshake. is a handshake. Right. That's right. the start. Isn't it amazing? that old saying that an oral contract isn't worth the paper it's written on. That's right. But can you imagine that's right? Among, among, listen, among righteous people, I would say you're right. And among, among righteous people, they don't worry. I mean, President Reagan always used to say, trust and verify. And, and, and he meant it in a complicated world. You can believe someone, but don't always take it on faith. I mean, we, we can say certainly, I mean, Lahabdil, 
in, in our world, you have people who are righteous and do take it on faith. Hopefully they don't get burned later on, nothing happens. But you're right, it, just on a handshake and an agreement, that's, uh, that's enough for them. So listen, we should all be enough. at that madrega where we can all feel that that should be uh, enough for all of us and we'll all be in great shape. There's another statement oh, yeah. that says, in uh, God we trust, all others pay cash. That's right, you cash. Very oh, good. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.